Those great musicians say that they were inspired by jazz. In your opinion, why is jazz so emotional, powerful, and one of the greatest musical genres of all time? I'll tell you something, this is a constant in places. This, with these microphones. <laughs> <laughs> microphones and videotapes. It was always like this. <laughs> well, the, well, the thing about jazz is uh, we speak a common language. But let's just take the young people that were playing. Joe and Philip. Yeah. And Jonathan. Yeah. I first. Yeah. I first heard of, of, of Joe and Philip. My father told me about them. Yeah. He said, "Man, there's some kids in Pennsylvania somewhere." He said, "Man, it's a bass player and a drummer." And I just heard them. I think their parents are musicians. They're unbelievable. I never heard a rhythm section like that. Now this is deep, they were in high school, this is years ago. And then I came through town, and one of my mother's best friends, a lady named Lorraine Wilson, knew them. And she said, you got to hear these kids play. And now they're up here playing. They're down. <laughs> they're down. They're down. They're down. I tell, I tell Philip whenever I see him, I want to hug him. I, I, can't, I can't help it. I mean, just something about him is lovable. I mean, I, it's something that I actually can't, can't help. And Joe, I mean, they're serious about the music, and they've been serious for a long time. And now they're young men. They were boys when I first met them. Jonathan I met at a camp in New Orleans. He was 13. Something I was beating them in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't like it, man. But he was always creative and, and and lovable like he is, you see him just as, as young people. As, as, as the thing about jazz is it's so, such a creative, expressive music that it allows them to be people to you whenever you first met them. Like he was a person when he was 13. Though they were, were, were teenagers, they were people. They came up on our bandstand and played and were swinging. I can still remember. I'm trying to remember what tune we played. But I remember we played 12 Zip, one of my father's tunes called 12 Zip. And I mean, just when I see them, I'm older than them, so it, it evokes, it's evocative of so much, and the music allows the freedom and the latitude and the equality across age, across generation, across everything. So, and we share that love, like you just heard of them, the way they play. Now they're together in a group. I met them separately. And their group, they play with a lot of, of fire and intelligence and, and, and power. And they've been together for a while. How many years y'all been together? When I heard the CD four or five years ago. Seven years. Seven or eight years, okay, they, they're almost just eight years old anyway. <laughs> so, when I see them, uh, I see Khalil Jackson, he's there, and uh, he's gonna be deployed to Afghanistan not too long from now. And, I mean, I met him when he was a boy, his father was a jazz musician, he passed away when he was little kids, he and his brother Ali, we played the band together, I have pictures of me standing up with them in Detroit when they're teen teenagers. And he's here, I didn't know he was gonna be here tonight, and for my my own son, my son, he doesn't he doesn't play, he doesn't play gigs, but he teaches and he represents the music. He understands. I never forced him to be into the music. He could do what he wanted to do. And the type of love, and so he loves Jay Bat, and he loves this group. My son is always talking about that. Man, you gotta go Bat, you got Jay Bat, you got Jay Bat. So it's like Khalil and I went to dinner the other night, and just the quality of this conversation, the seriousness that he he has as a as a as a as a, as a young man, just. The music, and I could just point out people all around me that I see that I know the music brings people together. It teaches us, teaches us how to listen to one another. It gives us a chance to address each other as, as equals and recognize each other's humanity. And in the core of the music is a deep and profound love for the creativity of other people and a respect for your own creativity. And it's very real. It's not, it's not a joke or it's not. So we spent a lot of time with each other. Jonathan, you know, we're from Kenner, Louisiana, actually, so it's so unusual to be Kenner. Nobody's from Kenner, Louisiana. Ain't nobody's really from there. And when I see him, I hear him play in the development, just I've heard him just playing just in the last six months, and I tell him, he could always play. Yeah, tell him all these young, young guys could play. They could play when they're 15, 16, 17, but to hear the type of development, like the jelly roll that he was putting on us a second ago with that, with the left hand and the right hand and the accuracy of the notes and the stuff that he's working on, to sharpen his integrity and the way they play as a group. And they were just in, 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 in Doha, in Qatar, playing for two weeks, and the people saying, bring them back. Right. You know, and they, and they engender the feeling and the spirit of the music. They go out, they play in the streets, they go out into the club, they bring the music to the people. 
And that's the thing about jazz. And that's what the music has to teach us is how, how, to, how to be your best self with other people and how to strive for sophistication without losing the sense of the, of the, of the, of the street and of the basic primitive thing that's in all human beings and to put those things together. You know, and they embody that, you know, so it's a blessing to be in the music. The music is very profound. When you've done all types of 